we're back on the air on Colt Radio Gogo with our long-awaited guest, who is definitely worth waiting for. We're here with Tura Satana. How are you doing tonight, Tura? I'm doing fine, Tiffany. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I think Terry's on the other line over there, too. Hey, how are you doing? Hello, Terry. How are you? I cannot believe... Oh, see how much of a better response you get from the mail there? What was that? I cannot <laughs> believe that I... I uh, I have this this thing where uh, I always like to be very responsive to males to see how uh, I get a response from them. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I had one of my listeners see uh, one of the pictures I posted of you in our bulletin, and all I got out of him was, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always nice to know. <laughs> you know, the thing is, I, I was talking earlier, I guess it's like, uh, the quality of a movie rather than quantity. You really don't have an incredible amount of, of what you call credits. You, I've got like 11 credits here, but God, you're such a legend for the uh, little amount that you've done. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the parts I played mostly. Right. Uh, back then, they were considered um, like BZ movies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, you had a leeway where you could do things uh, your own way rather than have to follow everybody's uh, died in the wool script uh, per line. Right. Say, uh, like with Fast and Pussycat, we we did a lot of ad libbing in that film. Um, you know, like when the guy was cleaning my windshield in the uh, gas station, you know, and I told him, I said, you won't find it down there, Columbus. <laughs> uh, a lot of people didn't realize that that wasn't really written in the script. That was something I just did off the top of my head because he was looking through the glass so intently that I figured I'd better say something. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's possibly to the testament of, of Russ Meyer that he let you do that. Was he pretty easy to work with? I heard you had a few stats with him. Uh, no, I only had one spat with him, and I broke my hand when I was doing it. Oh, wow. Uh, he and I were arguing about um, when I was running over the vegetable with, with his Porsche. Mm -hmm. It was Russ's Porsche I was driving. Right. And he was very upset. I mean, he just loved that car, so uh, he didn't want his tires to get scratched up. He didn't want his car to get dirty. And I said, well, then you shouldn't be having it out here in the desert if that's the case. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but he was so afraid that his tires would get all worn out. And I told him, I said, look, I said, you cannot do this scene where I'm running him into the wall and the wheel doesn't spin. Right. I said, if the wheel doesn't spin, it doesn't look real. Right. And he kept arguing with me, no, no, I don't want to do that to my car. I don't want to do <laughs> things all over my car. And I said, you know something? I said, if you really want to make this picture believable, you better do this. And he said, no, I don't want my car. And I turned around and I just hit a railroad tie wall. And I wound up breaking my hand. And he says, you're really serious about this, aren't you? <laughs> and I told him, I said, yes, very much so. Yeah. So it wasn't so much that he probably agreed with you. It was probably a lot he didn't want you to kick his ass, right? <laughs> well, it got to the point where, I, you know, I was just about ready to just tell him, you know, if uh, if you don't do it, you know, then uh, then you drive the damn car. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here's a wig. How about it? <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, and then, yeah, let's see how he does. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, what was uh, it like? He, he finally, he finally got to the point where I told him, I said, "Look, I'll even dig the goddamn hole for it." <laughs> <laughs> well, I dug the hole for the tires so we could put, get the tire spinning, mm -hmm. and I put blocks underneath the frame so that the the car wouldn't be hitting the 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 sand underneath. Wow! Wow! And you know, I mean, this was this was the kind of production we had. You know, there was only five. Uh, Five stage hands there. Mm -hmm. well, did you, did you say that? Uh, between the cameraman, the lighting, and everything else. Well, did you <laughs> say on uh, Turner Classic Movies they did a little thing on you there uh, when they did the underground film thing and they showed uh, Faster Pussycat? Did you say that a lot of the prop guys and stuff were, were weenies? Uh, I said what? You said that they were pretty much pussies. You had to do everything for them, oh, right? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> In what way? A bunch of wusses. I mean, it was really so funny because. 
Uh, well, one of the wusses was uh, was the guy who played Tom Pace. Uh, the, Tom Pace was the one that played um, um, the first guy that I where I broke his neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the boyfriend, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He was so afraid of getting hurt when I was doing this the the fight scene with him that I literally had to carry him through each throw and each uh, each punch that I did. I told him not to hold back on his punches, which he didn't. Uh, He went ahead and he punched and was socking away and everything else. And but he was so afraid that I was going to hurt him (laughs) that I literally had to pick him up, lay him down on the ground. Oh God! You know, and uh, he was to talk about a wuss. Yes, yeah. And most of those guys, uh, when it came to you know picking things up, like I mean, we had a. We had a, a pet tarantula mm-hmm. that uh, that adopted us while we were there in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys were so afraid of this spider. I swear to God. And it just, it, it loved me for some reason. Loved to get in my hair and stuff. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we just had a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun out there. Uh, I don't know too much about Susan Bernard having too much fun, but you know. Why did yeah, she I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about her. <laughs> what did you want to ask me about her? <laughs> well, there have been some moments that you guys may not have gotten along the best. How was she to work with? Uh, at first, to work with her, it was very, very difficult mm-hmm. because her mom was on the set and her mom was a typical Hollywood mother. Mm hmm. My daughter's not getting enough dialogue. She's not getting enough film time. She's not getting enough of this, not getting enough of that. I finally turned around and I told Russ, I says, if you don't get her off of the set, I says, I will kill her. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he said, he said, well, I can't very well, you know, her daughter's on the film. And I says, okay, let me do it. So I walked up to her and I told her, I said, hey. If your daughter's not getting enough time and not getting enough film and she doesn't have enough lines, maybe it's because she can't act. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and she looked at me as if to say, well, who are you? <laughs> and I said, I'm the person that has to get the response from her. That's right. right. So if I don't get a response from her, <laughs> I said, that makes the film die. Right. And I said, you can't. This film is not going to die because of you. No, the, the if film you pass off the set, and if you come back on, I'll punch your lights out. <laughs> the film definitely was something that everybody had to cooperate. It had to be a team because that, that had to be you know hard to do out there in the desert like well, it that. It was. It was 120 in the shade. Wow! And exactly where was that? Was it up here by me? We live in Palmdale. Mojave. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's so it. was under Mojave, right by uh, Lake Isabella. Uh, Edward Air Force Base near Johannesburg, Randsburg, you know, right in there. And it was the end of August, the first part of September. And uh, like I said, it was 120 in the shade. I pretty much know what you're talking about. We live pretty close to where you did the film. Aha, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or in the middle of nowhere. Or is referred to as hell, you know. <laughs> we went too far from Ridgecrest. You know? Yeah. Now, I don't. I don't want to bring up like bad memories, but I understand there was some definite reasons for you learning martial arts. Uh, is it true that you were the victim of a rape? Yes. What yes. happened? I was nine years old. Wow. I'm so sorry. Can you tell us anything about it? Well, unfortunately, I developed when I was nine years old. Yeah. I wound went to sleep one night and uh, I was flat chested. The next morning, I woke up and I had like a. A 34C breast. <laughs> like, wow. I, I asked my mother what was wrong with me. You know, I thought maybe something bit me during the night. <laughs> but uh, she said, no, she says, that's just part of growing up, you know. And I said, okay. I said, well, what do I do with them? <laughs> You call her Russ Meyer Legend. That's what you do. <laughs> and she told me, she says, well, you just have to take care of them. Make sure that you just, uh, well, for a long time, she used to keep me bound uh, down, you know, like Japanese uh, Japanese girls did when they were younger. You, you, 
they tied the uh, obies around you to make sure that your breast didn't get too large. Mm -hmm. If uh, I wonder how big they would have gotten if she hadn't done that. <laughs> <laughs> because right now I I measure a forty double H. Wow! Wow! A lot of girls would like to be you. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't like to carry that much weight around uh, in front of them, believe me. Yeah. But I understand that, that after you were attacked that you wound up getting back at them. Is that right? Yes. It took me several years uh, uh, because, uh, first of all, I got sent to reform school for enticing those boys to make them rape me. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Really? Uh-huh. Jeez. And then from there, uh, I had to make sure that I was not... Uh, you know, uh, become a, a girl toy for some of the uh, the uh, more masculine dykes that were in juvenile hall. Right. <laughs> uh, it was either beat the crap out of them, or wind up being somebody's uh, right. toy. You know? Right, right. So that's what I had to do, and it got to the point where I even had the matrons that were afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder so, why. I, I spent more time in solitary confinement than any <laughs> living person, I think, that ever went to usually when I was there. <laughs> so basically, you, you found them and, like, you kicked their ass, or what happened? Yes. Uh-huh. Good. Literally. Good. Well, not necessarily kicked their ass, but I got even. Okay. Right? Uh, I, you know, there was a couple of guys who were found... Uh, Hanging from, from a tree upside down, you know, from, by their genitalia. Oh. You know. And, you're just uh, there. and, uh, and uh, there was uh, a few that uh, wound up getting their homes uh, uh, busted up because their wives were told what went on and how they treated kids and so on. Well, and I'm so glad. You know, what, what would your advice be, and then we'll get off this subject, what would your advice be to uh, somebody that, that gets attacked as far as how, how you cope with that and, and living with yourself and, and, and dealing with it and the pain? The pain and the, uh, the, pain and the trauma that goes with it, it never really goes away because you can't help but feel violated. Yeah. Right. yeah. You can't help but feel violated. Somebody has has entered your space and did things to you. Right. Now, the only thing I can tell them is that if you let it get to you, it will destroy you. Right. right. You cannot let it get the best of you. You have to somehow work out the, the anger and, and the frustration that comes with it. Uh, me, I started studying martial arts, and then I slowly got even with each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. Especially the guy whose father paid the judge a thousand dollars to send me to reform school instead of them going to jail. Yeah, I heard there was a, a payoff thing going on there. Yeah. Wow. Well, and, the reason uh, my my father went ballistic, yeah. but. Uh, but there was nothing he could do about it because uh, they were a very wealthy Italian family. Well, the reason I wanted you to mention that is because you're, you're such an icon, not only in movies, but a hero to women and to young girls and to people, just showing what you can overcome, that you basically was very poor when you were young, and you're of Japanese descent, and you were in an American concentration camp. Is that right? An internment camp? Yeah, they call it an internment camp. Yeah. <laughs> There's all that crazy stuff that's going on with the war to where we didn't trust anybody Japanese back then. It was crazy. Oh, no, it was only because we were able to, they were able to pick out who we were uh, as preferred to the Germans or the Italians when, when they were in the war against us. Right. Uh, yeah. I had a couple of uncles that got killed over in the 442 in Europe when they went during the war because they were with the Nisei Battalion. But um, they, that's something that um, I try to forget about. Yeah, I hope that'll never happen again because that, that was a crazy... Uh, God forbid that it should ever yeah. happen. Yeah, that was as crazy as when America fought itself with the North and the South, you know, it's just nuts. Yeah, yeah, that, it, it was... And, and, and wars are nothing but greed anyway, you know. Yeah. If somebody wants something that somebody else has, so they they go and fight about it, you know. 
that you actually came kind of from a performing family. Am I right in understanding that your father was? A well, my father was a silent screen actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and my mother was a circus performer. She was a circus acrobat. So did you always kind of want to get into some kind of performing, or did you just? Because I know some people are like, oh, I just fell into it. I just it. kind of fell into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I in school when I was in school, mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, a school soloist because I used to have a vocal range of about four and a half octaves. Oh wow! And uh, and I used to sing. I was what they call a mezzo soprano. Mm -hmm. And I could sing, you know, um, very, very high, very, very low. <laughs> right. Well, I understand you even lied about your age to try to become a jazz singer in Chicago, right? Uh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah, I tried to become a singer in Chicago and in Los Angeles. Uh, I went to L.A. when I was 13 because I got out of reform school then. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and uh, I had a parole officer, a, a juvenile parole officer, who just hated Orientals. Wow. Because her, she lost a boyfriend over there to uh, to a Japanese girl. Right. So uh, I was the nearest thing to, you know, <laughs> she could get even with. And uh, she constantly was harassing me. Um, oh, God, until I was about... So I was about 15, and she couldn't, you know, she couldn't find me anymore because right. I changed my name. I became a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I was working in nightclubs at uh, at 15 or actually 13, uh, and uh, I have uh, I was doing some nude modeling for Harold Lloyd. I heard about that. Now Harold Lloyd's a legend to me because I'm all into Laurel and Hardy and the Hal Roach comedies and everything. You know, he worked for Hal Roach. What was he like? He was uh, one of the sweetest persons you would ever want to work with. Uh, he he was very uh, self-conscious uh, about uh, being alone with any any of the females. So there was always somebody there, uh, uh, another female there, who acted as a buffer. Uh, so yeah. no monkey business. And he was yeah he was the only person that I ever posed to the nude for. <laughs> I know because you you commented in, in being, you know, an exotic dancer that you really don't like what they're doing now with stripping because you think it's pornography. Well, it, it, it's not necessarily, see, they don't, they don't do burlesque like they used to. Right. When I was an exotic dancer, um, I was taught to use the stage. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I mean, you have a stage, you're the person up there, you're the center of attraction up there. You have an audience that is on three sides of you, not just in the center. Right. And you have to make that audience want to come back to see you. So you have to make them enjoy what they're going to see. And being a stripper is one thing. Being a strip tease is another. Right. That's what the whole thing is about. You tantalize, you titillate, and you do what... What stimulates? I had this one girl who got so angry at me because her boyfriend was watching me on stage and she threw an ashtray at me in Las Vegas. Oh. <laughs> and I, you know, why was why were they? I got so angry. You know, I got jumped off the stage and I got her up against the wall. <laughs> and uh, she she says to me, she says, "Well, my boyfriend was I said, well." Why did you come in here? Exactly. Right. And she says, well, because I figured he'd get a little stimulated and we might, you know. Yeah. yeah. I says, well, honey, let me give you a news flash. I says, that's exactly what I'm doing. I said, you're going to go home with him, not me. Yeah. I said, so, you know, you got to understand that I'm working him up for you. You're going to reap the rewards. <laughs> so get off my damn back. <laughs> you know. Well, you did everything at an early age. You were even married at 13? Yes. Wow, and you're not even from the South. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was married down South. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we, were, we were married. The only place that you could marry at the age of 13 was Hernando's, Mississippi. <laughs> really? Yep. Son of a gun. Wow. Now you know, huh? You can still do it. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, from what I understand, that, that was the only place where you could go and be married at uh, 13 years of age, not have to lie about it, you know. Now, I know you just finished writing a book, right? I finished writing my biography, yeah. And that's going to be out soon? 
Um, yeah, if the if the publisher that I'm talking to is interested in doing it, yes. Because I'm telling you, Tura, I, it's unfortunate you had a lot of things that happened, but God, your life just has to be made to a movie, you know? <laughs> I've never heard so many things people, happen. Yeah, I mean, it, they told me that a long time ago, and I said, you know, I said, I, I don't think anybody would be really interested in, in paying that much attention to my life, but they say, <laughs> you don't realize the things that I that you've done. And exactly. I said, well, you know, I, I think, the, the hard times that you had and, and a lot of the, the violence and the bad people you came up against and, and then combined with your, your show business surroundings with your parents is what made Tura. Oh, yes. Yeah, very much so because I, um, well, also being in burlesque. Yeah, that too. A lot. The, the people that I worked with in burlesque, they became like a family to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether people believe it or not, their morals backstage are a lot higher than anybody else's because they don't believe in uh, hanky-panky and stuff like that backstage. And you don't go after somebody else's boyfriend, husband, whatever, you know. Right. Yeah, where is people like Lily St. Cyr anymore, right? Oh, Lily St. Cyr was one of the sweetest persons that you'd ever want to meet. And her sister, who was married to uh, Harold Minsky, mm -hmm. she, they, they were they were my biggest fans. Wow. <laughs> Dancing, you know, and I used to love to go and watch Lily because I used to watch Lily um, when she was at the Minsky Theater and then when she was working at the Brass Rail in um, in Chicago. And she worked at a couple of places there where she did her routine. She did various routines. You know, she did the French maid. She right. did the girl in the, the champagne glass. She did the shower scene, uh, you know, and... Um, she did so many different things that it was hard for anybody else to come up with original. Did but you uh, love watching me dance because she said she loved my Japanese kimonos? Right. Yeah, I heard in, in the early <laughs> days you just did the whole Japanese thing, right? Yes. Uh huh. Fantastic. Do you by chance know Betty Page? Uh, no, I never met Betty. But she did work with Tempest Storm, correct? Uh, we worked, we followed each other into different theaters, but we never worked together because we were both headliners. Right, right. So, uh, I mean, I would follow her into a theater, or she would follow me into a theater, or, you know. I mean, I know Tempest, and uh, as a matter of fact, um, I just saw her in June when I got uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award from uh, Exotic World. Wow. You know, and... Um, uh, it was down in Las Vegas uh, back in the early part of June. Now, I have to ask you, because I, I was reading on your website about um, where you were, you know, writing the autobiography and everything, and one of the things you had mentioned, of course, all the female listeners of the station are going to want to know about this, you had mentioned something about kissing Elvis. How did that come about? <laughs> well, kissing Elvis was, uh, I had to teach him how to do that. that really? Was really? Yeah. So how that happened? Well... Uh, I first met him in about 1954. I was working in Biloxi, Mississippi at the Beach Club mm -hmm. in Biloxi. And after I finished with my show, I was walking on the on the, the Gulf Coast, you know, just along the beach mm -hmm. and uh, just relaxing. And unwinding is, is what I usually do after I finish dancing because I put a lot of stuff into my routine. Right. Sure. <laughs> anyway... Um, I was walking along, this guy walks up, he's coming at me, and I think, oh, God, he's really cute, you know. And then I, I saw his eyes, and I said, God, those are the most beautiful blue eyes I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and he walked up to me, and he says, hi. He says, are you lost? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> I said, I just finished my show, and so I'm just kind of relaxing. And he says, do you mind if I walk with you? You know, and... At that time, he had that cute little southern accent, you know. Right. And uh, we sat on the beach for, oh, until about 7 o'clock in the morning. This was about 2.30, I think it was. Anyway, and we sat there and talked and, and uh, just talked about everything and anything, but, you know, I never got around to getting his name. Wow. And, like, later on, you were like, wow. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the thing was that uh, about a year and a half later, uh, I 
I find out that he's uh, that. Well, I was working at the the Follies Theater in Chicago, mm-hmm. and he comes backstage. He comes backstage with the owner, and the owner of the theater uh, tells me, he says, uh, I have somebody here who knows you and wants to uh, say hello. And Elvis steps out from around the corner, oh. <laughs> and he says, do you remember me? And I said, oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, um, he says, I don't know if you know who I am and I said no and he says well my name is Elvis and we never got a chance to exchange names <laughs> <laughs> you don't exchange names you just exchange kisses right uh, uh, well actually the, the first time was I was teaching him you know that y- you don't kiss like a fish <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and and you don't get everybody all a wet face that I do just t- kind of turned me off a little bit so I showed him how mm-hmm. well and you know Tura I've, I've never really learned how to kiss I don't live too far away from you so well Terry you know I mean maybe uh, next time I see you I'll teach you how okay very very good <laughs> I'll uh, teach you just like I taught Elvis so, so he pretty much was a gentleman though right oh very much so yeah very much so uh, i you know, I mean, on the beach, uh, we we just talked and did a little um, petting, but that's, that's about it. <laughs> but uh, afterwards, it was something else. Oh, okay. Well, so there was an afterwards then. Oh, yes, yes. That's yes, for about three years. Oh, very I good. Know. Wow. So you, you had like a little relationship there. Uh-huh. Fantastic. I mean, how many women can say that, right? <laughs> Well, how many women can say they have a ring from him, too? Oh, wow. Uh, no, you better hang on to that, Tara. I do. I <laughs> Fantastic. do. You know, the thing about Faster Pussycat, and even mentioned in Turner Classic Movies, is it's one of Russ's only movies that didn't have nudity in it. Now, had he ever intended to have nudity? Oh, yes. He did? Yeah, and I told him no. Oh, ah, so that's why. Mm-hmm. I told him, I said, I don't do nudes. I don't do porn. I said, if you want me in this movie, I says, we aren't going to do any of that. And he says, well, we have this shower scene, you know. And I says, as long as my back is to the camera, I said, that's one thing. I said, anything more than that? I said, no. Uh, And basically, he said, oh, that's good, you know. (laughs) That worked out fine for him, I guess. Well, it sounded to me like you pretty well ran that show over there. Pretty much, you know, uh, I mean... It got to the point where, I mean, he was he didn't have where I was, you know, where I uh, was going to uh, snap this guy's neck in, in the script. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were just having a fight scene. But I said, well, let's do this, let's do, let's do a little heavier, you know. And uh, he says, well, that's never been done on screen. I says, well, that might as well. <laughs> I would be the first woman, and, yeah. and I was the first woman to ever uh, kill a man with her bare hands. You know, I, I swear to God, I'm not, I can't really remember like when the Avengers came out, but I don't know if you remember the old TV show, The Avengers. I swear they based Mrs. Peel on you. Do you know that show? The Avengers, yeah, it came out uh, shortly. It was, I think, about a year afterwards. There you after, go. Um, I'm, I'm sure they based it on you. Did they ever say anything to you? No, 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 but I always loved that show. Yeah, gotcha. it was one of my favorites. How do you feel about being coded to her as basically the first femme fatale? I mean, you were such a strong woman in film. You've given, I'm sure, so many people so much inspiration. The first strong woman in film. Well, uh, I, you know, I find that uh, that a lot of the ladies and even a lot of the guys have uh, written me and told me, how just watching that film is, has changed their lives mm-hmm. in, in different ways. Uh, how they've they've developed a new attitude, a uh, more self assurance, uh, just from watching that. And uh, a lot of gals who used to be very um, reticent about being busty are no longer that way. And I told them, I says, why should you be, you know? backwards about it. I said, right. God gave you that, and he said, you got to 
you know, if you got it, flaunt it, honey. Right. <laughs> I bet you being the woman you were and knowing how women were portrayed back then as being all weak and everything, I bet you that irritated the hell out of you, didn't it? Uh, not necessarily, because, see, I was raised, you know, like Japanese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and my father used to be the, the lord and manor of the manor, you know. <laughs> he ruled that roost uh, like nobody else did. But... Uh, he also taught us, all of the girls, to be independent. Right. You should never, never rely on anybody else but yourselves. Right. And he taught me um, and my brother uh, martial arts, but my brother passed away back in the 70s, and um, that left just me. My other sisters were uh, not interested in it. Uh, and since I was the oldest, I was always the one that, uh, if something happened to them, I was the one that went and rectified it real quick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a daughter, right? I have two. Two. So, are they like you, or? Uh, well, my one daughter, she takes Taekwondo. There you paid. go. Uh, she is uh, right now a uh, yellow green stripe. Um, Taekwondo, uh-huh. which is uh, up there. A uh, way bit. up there, yeah. yeah. And uh, my other daughter, she <clears throat> she basically just is uh, kind of a singer. <laughs> so, so they took a little bit of me. Each one took a little bit of you then. Yeah. So how would you describe uh, Ted B. Michaels as compared to Russ Meyer? Totally different. Totally different people. Um Ted liked to have his script done uh, verbatim, and uh, although sometimes he and I would have little tangles because uh, some of the characters that he had me play were not not free enough, you mm. know. <clears throat> and I, you know, I don't know. I um, I worked with Ted in three different films. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I only got to work with Russ on one. So. Yeah, there you go. Now, did you want, I mean, would, he, would you have worked with Russ again? What was the reason he never used you again? Did he ever say? Uh, he never used, because he, he never had anything else that he came up with that I cared to do or cared to be in. Well, he all the other films were nude. Yeah, yeah. that and uh, a lot of it was, uh, he got heavier into uh, porn than, than I preferred to be and I told him I says well I don't do that stuff and you know it yeah but he and I stayed friends until the day he died you know so. yeah well I asked another lady there, there's two strong women that I love and admire one is you and the other one is Mary Warnoff and she also like you worked with John Carradine how did you find John Carradine work with him in the Astro Zombies John Carradine ah <laughs> oh, he was a sweetheart he was one of um I would say a, a real lover, you know. Um, I used to have to have body makeup on because of my dresses that I wore. Mm-hmm. So I would be there at like 5 o'clock in the morning standing there in my bra and panties and getting body makeup on. And invariably, John was always there. And since it was such a small area... The, you know, I mean, he didn't have to have his makeup on or anything right. uh, until around nine o'clock. But he used to sit there and watch. <laughs> John wasn't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, John wasn't stupid. And he, used to, he used to say, "God, you have such beautiful skin." And I said, mm, "It's even nicer to touch." <laughs> and uh, and he'd say, "God, if I was only thirty years younger, God, if I was only thirty years older, could we have some?" <laughs> I said, but right now I'd be afraid of attacking your heart. <laughs> so. Well, considering how you're, you're definitely a male magnet and you had the whole thing going with Elvis and that, uh, you also did a Dean Martin movie. What was Dean Martin like? Uh, he was a love. He was a love. I mean, uh, he, he would sit there and watch me twirl my tassels. <laughs> well, Danny Mann was a very, very dear friend of mine, and he was the one who casted me in, in Who's Been Sleeping in My Bed. Mm-hmm. And Dean had never seen me dance. 
So he was uh, he he was totally surprised. I mean, when when I did my dance routine for that movie, mm -hmm. uh, we supposedly had a closed set with a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for a closed set, uh, I swear to God, it was the most crowded thing in the world. Wow. <laughs> and most of them were, you know, the different heads of different, uh, the different uh, films that were being shot around the studio. This was uh, shot over at uh, Paramount. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we had more people on that set than I think they had in the theater when we first did the film. <laughs> 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 they previewed it. But, you know, Danny Mann wanted a reaction from Dean. He got one. <laughs> uh, well, oh, yeah, he did. Uh, because one time he said, he says, I want Dean. Dean had never seen me d do my tassels. And I, and all the time I was dancing, I didn't take anything off on top to show that I was wearing my tassels. Right. So uh, I'm dancing, and, and, and he's having a great time watching it all, you know. And then, uh, then I'm off camera, and, and Danny says, I want you to do your back bend and twirl the tassels. And I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing the back bend, and as I'm t doing my back bend, I take off my bra. Mm -hmm. Well, the collective, <gasps> <laughs> on the set was something else, but but um, when I bent over backwards and I started twirling the tassels, Dean's eyes got like humongous, <laughs> and he said, "Oh boy!" <laughs> yeah, and it was it was ah <laughs> one of those type of things. And so when I stopped one and made it change directions. He he just sat there with his mouth open, and everybody on the on the set did the applause. I mean, they had to stop shooting because they started applauding. Wow! <laughs> Lynn, did you have a lot of trouble with with directors hitting on you? I don't know if like Russ or Ted ever tried, but what about a casting couch kind of a situation. Anybody ever try it on you, Tara? Oh yes, yeah. Well, that's why I lost a lot of parts. I really did. I lost a lot of parts. I was going to be in a... Yeah, you don't get the job when you kick their ass, right? <laughs> and I lost that because the, the casting director said, well, if you want to be in this film, then you have to go to bed with me. I said, honey, I said, if I have to go to bed with you to get a job, I'll do without. Right. <laughs> wow. I mean, I just, I, I could never see having to go to bed with somebody just to get a part. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not saying sure. I didn't go to bed with some of the people that I worked with. Well, you know, one of our friends, I, I know how you feel Jews. about... <laughs> right. I know how you feel about porn, but uh, we have a friend that's in the porn business, and he operates Kick-Ass. It's a company down there in L.A. And with all the little debutantes and everything he has, the proudest thing he has on his wall is a Faster Pussycat poster. <laughs> So there you go, as far as your fans being wide and diverse. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, uh, it, it makes a lot of women stop and think, you know. Really? Uh, I know that a lot of gals uh, have said that they uh, would probably have been a lot more reticent about doing things if they had not seen that film first. Uh, and you're definitely not retired because you just did a film with your friend and mine, a man by the name of Cody. Yes. A film called Sugar Box with uh, Cody Jarrett. Yeah, Sugar Box. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's that about? Uh, it's about a woman's uh, penitentiary in the South. And um, Kit Natividad plays uh, the head matron there, I think. And um, some of the other gals who uh, were supposed to be in it were um, also Russ Meyer ladies. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just Kitten and I that are in it. I love her. She's a good gal. You get along good with her? Oh, she, yes. She's, she's one of my dearest friends. Her and Haji, you know, Haji and I you know, are, go back. Haji and I used to dance together in different nightclubs. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, she and I used to dance topless dancing at the Losers Club and at the Body Shop, you know. Oh, you danced at the Body Shop? Oh, yes. Oh, I was there on Wednesday. <laughs> you were? Oh, well, I don't dance there anymore. <laughs> Why not? We need to, I think you'd be better than the girls I saw on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but I used to dance at the body shop and uh, Pink Pussycat. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, 
when Alice Schiller owned the Pink Pussycat, uh, that's where I was working when um, Billy Wilder came in and hired me for Irma LaDuce. Wow. You know, yeah, his, his wife came in with, they came in with um, IAL Diamond and uh, the Marish Brothers, and Billy and his wife came in, and when I went on stage, his wife said, there's your Suzette Wong. Absolutely. <laughs> and I would have had a lot more time on that film if I hadn't broke my leg in the paddy wagon. And what had happened there? How did you break your leg? Oh, in the paddy wagon. Everybody fell on my leg. Oh. In that paddy wagon. I don't know if you remember the scene where uh, everybody was in the paddy wagon with Jack Lemmon. Mm -hmm. And we're all doing... Uh, Little birdie, pretty little birdie. <laughs> right. And we're, we're, we're singing to him, and, and, and the driver supposedly gets distracted. Well, the guys outside who had the, the paddy wagon on um, joust, I guess, uh, they got a little too rambunctious, and they, they really tilted the wagon. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I mean literally everybody, fell on me. Wow. And my Ooh. leg was, went the wrong way. Well, you, you've been hurt a lot, haven't you? Uh, not really, no. No, only, uh, only got hurt in that, uh, in, uh, Irma mm -hmm. And, uh, when I punched the railroad tie to get Russ's attention. Right. <laughs> so no other accidents on sets, right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty lucky about things like that. Even when I did Our Man Flint and, and, uh, and uh, you know, scenes like that, the, we had we had a lot of fun. I played both dancers in Our Man Flint. I understand from what we hear from Suzanne that your your grandchild's always asking you to teach uh, the martial arts to him. Uh, yeah, they do, but I I don't anymore because the now I was in an automobile accident back in 1981 oh. and uh, injured my back yeah. pretty badly. Now, we had read that around that time that you actually, you know, take a break from, you know, acting and things like that, you actually worked at the hospital for a couple of years? Yes, uh -huh. I worked at, in a hospital uh, at um, North Hollywood Medical Center. Mm -hmm. I worked there for about four years in the emergency room, and then I took over managing um, a couple of the doctors who worked with me in the emergency room. I took over their office and started being their nurse and uh, and office manager. And you were a dispatcher for the LAPD? Yes. Wow, you've done everything. And I was also security in um, the Reno Hilton. I don't think anybody would mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. They didn't. That was the nice part about it. Most people didn't, uh, didn't mess with me, not because they knew who I was, but because I just had that. Right. Aura, I guess. <laughs> you know, like I'm sure I, with me because I'll tear your head off. <laughs> and you know, like I said, your, your life should definitely be a movie. And I, I guess to the point that, that you're that colorful, that you're even a comic book. Yes, I do have a comic book. Uh huh. Wow. Is That's that like made up stories or is that about your life? Or? No, it's a continuation of Faster Pussycat, basically. Oh. Um, we, we wrote a story where uh, instead of dying, I get found in the desert by uh, this guy uh, and this little girl uh, who were riding around on a dune buggy. Uh, of course, I'm pretty beat up, but, yeah. uh, you know, they uh, they take me into their little commune, and, uh, and uh, I wind up getting better and actually turning into a good guy because I wind up killing the bad guys. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we, we had somebody mention, and then Tiffany wants to ask them here, uh, that uh, there was like some suggested lesbianism between you and, and one of your fellow pussycats Haji. and faster pussy and Haji. Is, is that right? You guys were supposed to be... Well, actually, yeah. It, it, it was something that was insinuated. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't know if you remember the, the lunch scene. Where yeah. Billy says you FM AM and mm -hmm. FM broads are you know all like right. <laughs> or you one band broads you know all like whatever um, but uh, yeah that was uh, insinuated a lot uh, uh, in there but it wasn't until the lunch scene that you really caught that 
Yeah, because I didn't get it until around then, and I'm like, what? And then I was like, oh. <laughs> I guess they were probably afraid to uh, bring that out more back in the day, considering that was kind of like... Well, yeah, back then, uh, it was not done. You yeah. never yeah. Even insinuated something like that. You know, it just was not done. Everybody was in the closet back then. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also had something... And, uh, and uh, the funny part about it is that I am not gay, which uh, most people, you know, think I'm, I'm either bi or what have you. Um, I get hit on by more girls than, than I think um, a lot of people walking down. You, you know why? It's because of that. <laughs> but um, back in know, the day... I always, uh, hell, Ursula Andress even hit on me. And oh, really? I said, you know, honey, I said... Once I go through all the guys in the world, then I'll go to girls. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what the thing is? Back in the day when you dressed like you did, and especially the way you dressed in Faster uh, Pussycat, that was fashionable. But that's the way that a lot of the gay women are dressing nowadays in leather bars and that. Actually, a lot of your goth women are dressing yeah, like that. Yeah, goth women are too. So, but then uh, black has always, you know, been um, my color. You're lucky Joan Crawford didn't hit on you. I heard that she was pretty bad at that. Uh, yeah, well, no, she and I didn't run in the same circles anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, you also had something something big come out uh, this past July. You actually appeared at Comic-Con. I guess uh, artist Mark Alfrey created a statue, a tourist statue. Is that correct? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, there's a uh, tourist Satana statue, and this is just the beginning of a series that he is going to do of me. Yeah, I really, yeah. I really envision you. You're, you're like in the same category as like a Betty Page because you're not only an actress and a dancer, but you're like this big uh, beauty icon, you know. Well, I, I've never considered myself a beauty. Oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I always thought I was an ugly little kid. <laughs> oh, I don't care if you someday become 99 years old. You can still call on me. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Well, uh, at least I know I've got that going for me. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you what kind of your opinion was. I, I hear that Quentin Tarantino had just made a recent comment about saying that of all the people in the world that he could work with, that he would give five years of his life to work with Tura. Yes, he did. He did say that in, in Entertainment Weekly magazine, as a matter of fact. Have you talked to Quentin? Uh, why why uh, are you no. all this movie? Uh, I guess it's hard to find. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, come on. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, I recently I just met John Waters for the first time. Oh, yes, he's a great guy. He's one of our friends. Oh, yes, and what a sweetheart mm-hmm. he is. You know, I mean, just, just adorable. I just, you know, could just. Squeeze him. <laughs> he's he's like a little little thin teddy bear. <laughs> you guys can tell stories on those like one of those little guys that used to sit in the front row at the burlesque <laughs> with the red on his lap, you know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I always yeah, I always wanted to meet him because uh, he was another one who was uh, just. He just adored Faster Pussycat. Yes. Uh, he didn't get along well with Russ, but he loved Russ's technique as far as his camera work was concerned and his cutting and editing of a film. Uh, he just he just adored Russ that way. Did you like Liz Renee? Because I know he's one of John's, I mean, she was one of John's favorites. Liz and I were, were we worked in two different films, you know, together. She yes. worked in, she worked in, um, Astro Zombies, and also in Mark of the Astro mm-hmm. Zombies. And she was easy to get along with, or? Oh, Liz was a sweetheart, yeah. That's what I heard. You know, she passed away. Yes, yeah. uh, for not, not too long ago, was it? Yeah. No, last, uh, as a matter of fact, she passed away, I think, in uh, April. Yeah. 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 So what do you think of doing a silly sci-fi movie? The Astro Zombies was, was pretty cheap, <laughs> let's put it that way. It was great, but, I mean, it was very cheaply made. Yeah, they're very cheaply made. Uh, all the all the clothes that I wore in there were mine. Okay. And um, and the car we drove was mine. <laughs> Why, when they made uh, Mark of the Astro Zombies, that was quite a few years later, wasn't it? Yeah, that was done uh, in uh, September of 2001. Yeah. And the Doll Squad, you had to have loved that movie. Oh, the Doll Squad was one of my favorites. Uh, the only problem was that my a lot of my parts got cut out because of um, of Ted. Yeah, I'm Sharon surprised. Vernon. 
she uh, at that time was a little jealous of me. Afterwards, we became very good friends, but uh, uh, she was a little jealous of me back then. Oh, well, you know, that's Hollywood for you. Hey. That's life. <laughs> Was there any other final question? That's, there, that's all part of uh, uh, living this this life. Uh, I don't don't knock anybody. I find that I I just enjoy everybody. And you know, you don't sound like you have any regrets. I mean, you had a lot of hard times, but you learned from that, and, and you've definitely overcome everything. And, and you are such a symbol for everybody. I can't tell you how much I love you. You are so fantastic. Boy, thank you, Terry. <laughs> and I do, too, but I'm not going to try to compete with him. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so. now, I can understand that part. <laughs> now, the one thing I can say about uh, my life mm -hmm. is that I am very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy with being able to just... Uh, be who I am. You know, I enjoy that, and I enjoy the fact that I am doing, uh, you know, I'm doing uh, what I like. Right. I'm able to to uh, talk to my fans when I go to different places and, and uh, get a chance to see them and, and meet them. And I always feel very, very humble around my fans because of the fact that without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And the fans know a real person, and you're a real person, and we can totally tell that. Uh, yeah, they, they do, do know that, and they, they just find me very accessible. And I don't know if you know the film or not, but my friend says hello, Jonathan Udis, that made a tribute film, what he calls a tribute film to Faster Puss Guy. He made the film Pervert. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was actually the night you sent me a copy. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the night that we met Kitten. We met her at the uh, the opening of Pervert. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't she a sweetheart? She's so sweet. And, and she is, she is uh, one of the most uh, giving persons that you would ever, you know, want to bump into. She has uh, got a heart as big as her whole body, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I'll tell you what. Some night we need to arrange a night, and you need to be on stage at the body shop with Kitten. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Now, I would pay to see that. <laughs> you would, huh? Yes, I would. Yeah, thank it you so much. you a lot. <laughs> Malcolm, for every dollar that you can, to, uh, <laughs> it would cost him a small fortune because I still have one pair of tassels. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, God bless you, Tara, and, and thanks so much for Suzanne for setting us up. She's a sweet woman. Yes, she is, isn't she? She is. That's a great job. She's the one who does uh, does my uh, website. Yeah, this well, is a great website, by the way. Isn't she? she? And she she does a fantastic job. She just moved down to Palm Springs, yeah. matter of fact. So you have any upcoming appearances or anything you want to promote? Or? Uh, right now, no. Uh, I know that um, next year I'm going to be at Comic-Con again. Oh, there you go. There you go. And uh, I know that um, Exotic World wants me back again. <laughs> I don't know why they want me back again, but I know they they asked me if uh, if I would come back. And, Is that where uh, you won a trophy? Well, no, I, yeah, I got a huge trophy from them. I swear yeah. to God, it's just almost as tall as I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, but um, yeah, it uh, for being for being one of the legends. Well, it's, it's still true. around. Uh, one of the original <laughs> legends is still around. <laughs> you you bring back everything for me. I mean, the, the days now suck, and, and we need more people like you. And let me ask you this: If they ever do make a movie about your life, who would you want to play you? Well, I've already had people who talked to me about that. They wanted to make a film of my my biography. And um, what do you think I, about Lucy Liu? No. Don't like her? No, no, no. She's very, very talented, and she's a very pretty girl, but she's not built right. Oh, that's right. definite. <laughs> they have to get those prosthetics. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if if I uh, if I could find a girl who is Japanese and or Oriental and built like me, uh, then I would definitely consider her. The other people I was thinking of was either Lucy Lawless, who played Xena. There you go. Or Rose McGowan. Oh, uh, uh, you just hit it right now because everybody here loves her. Yeah, uh, because, I mean, she has the body, uh, she has the face, 
uh, it can be made up to be oriental, you mm-hmm. know. I could do her makeup real easy. Right, right. Uh, she has the, I think she has the attitude where she can, uh, she would be able to carry it off. Yeah, right. definitely. And I hope we see your book come out one of these days. What was the name of the book? The Kick-Ass Life of Tourist Satana. What else? <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Tur. God bless you and good night. And, and I am so honored to, to have you, the legend, be on call radio. Uh, thank you, Terry. And uh, next time I come down to uh, L.A., I'll tap on your door. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a room ready for you, Tur. <laughs> Uh, okay, as long as it's got enough padding on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> good night, my lovely. Good night, love. <laughs> 